Hey guys, welcome back to my path to glory. We have just set up the cup team, which is the same formation. And I have noticed there is still a position that I think I might need to bring in some reinforcements. I think right mid is a little bit of a weak spot for us because if we don't have ints playing there, there isn't anyone else that can play there other than Juve. Although technically Smith Rowe could play there. And I, I guess you could put, um, have I forgotten his name? Hudson Adoy, of course, Hudson Adoy, only just, you know, the best young player we've got at the club. But he, he could play there. But I'm thinking for the second team, the cup team that we've put together, I would like someone else that can play as a right winger, right midfielder. So that's what we're going to be doing as our final signing of the window. It wasn't just me that saw it. There were a few comments, people saying that maybe you should look at getting a right sided player as well, because the two wingers we bought were both left sided. Which is fine, because we only had McLean there. And, uh, I mean, not a terrible player to have. He's still got some ability in there, but he is 30 years old. And it was right to replace him, technically replace him, and bring in a reinforcement. And Hudson and Adoy is only on loan as well. So if I wanted to stay here for another season or two, it would be good to have another winger permanently. Um, but who knows, maybe I'll sign someone on loan again. We will find out. What we've got is, I think, three I've found. Yeah, three players on the shortlist. We've got Clark here from Leeds. We've got Chong from Manchester United, who I think would have to be a loan. I don't think we'll be able to afford him. I don't know, actually. We'll, we'll get the scouting done as much as we can. But I found this guy. Now, I've not seen much of this guy before, Butoba. Now, I'm probably saying that wrong, and I'm pretty sure this guy does not have a potential of 90 or more. But when I found him in the transfer global market, whatever they call it these days, he, he said it said on his page that he has potential to be special, which means 90 plus, right? So either it's bugged out, I, I, I really don't know. Um, but I don't know how long we've actually got left. Are we going to have time to scout all of these players yeah, we probably do. I think we do. But um, let's go ahead and get our first game out of the way here. As I said in the last episode, we won't be playing the uh, the Cup games other than the FA Cup. So the League Cup is not something that we're too worried about. We're going to go ahead and select the second team and simulate. Let's see if we can beat Huddersfield. We sold Berahino to them. I'm wondering, is he going to be starting? And we'll see if we get a good result. He isn't starting. He's on the bench. 15 minutes in, nothing has happened just yet. Still nothing, not even a yellow card at this point, which is rare for Stoke. There you go, although it's gone to Huddersfield. <laughs> 45 minutes in, second half now. Smithrow has just come on. Are we going to be progressing into the next round? Oh, it's looking unlikely. We're 1-0 down now, 63 minutes in. Are we going to find an equaliser? No, we're not. We have been knocked out already, oh dear. I mean, it wasn't... I wasn't going to be surprised by losing in, in a game against a Premier League side. It happens, even though our squad is actually probably better. The fact it was an away game was never a good start, but we don't... The Carabao Cup is just not a big deal. FA Cup, Championship, that is all I'm focusing on this season. So I think actually it could be a little bit of a, a hidden blessing, a blessing in disguise, as they say. So up next, after our two wins in two games, we do have a tough game coming up. Sunderland away from home. I think they might just be up there with us at the end of this season. They do have a good squad, although not in the top six. They've drawn one and won one. So hopefully we can continue our winning form in the league and make it nine points from nine. We've got a transfer offer here for Charlie Adam. Yes, we'll be accepting that. I bet, though, he will not go because his wages are pretty high for such a rubbish, mediocre player. And we've had a transfer talk breakdown, of course. That's our third choice goalkeeper. I don't really need to sell him, but I thought I might as well try. It's a bit of money, isn't it? Um, talking of money, we've got five million to spend. So whether we can do a deal or not with one of those three wingers, or if it's just going to be a loan, either way, I want to make something happen before the end of this window. But let's go ahead and play against Sunderland now. There are some players I recognise in that Sunderland team. Catamol, of course, he's been there for so, so long. They've got McGeady in there, Watmore. There's a few players that were definitely there while they were in the Premier League, but of course they have just fallen down and down. They've gone with Flanagan in defence. That's not the Flanagan I'm thinking of, is it, from the Liverpool days? It might be. 
It might not be, though. There's probably quite a few Flanagans that I don't know about. But it seems like a strong squad from Sunderland, and I'm sure they will have a go. But after playing two games and playing so well in those games, I'm feeling pretty confident. 20 minutes in, we're having a lot of possession, but we're not, we're not really doing anything with it. But that's okay. I'm going to be patient. Our chances will come. Give that to Afobe. Into Ndai, who's arguably been our best player so far this season. Super impressed with him. Here's Mbula now. Through for hudson Adoy, maybe not. It was a, such a rubbish pass, Matt. What were you thinking? There was a defender literally right there. We've won it back, though. No, Vimmer's walked right through that. Now we've got some defending to do, although Kanate is quick. He should get there. There you go. Well played. Good signing, Kanate. I recommend him. Let's put in the speedy hudson Adoy. Oh, hang on. Look at Tom Ince. What a ball. And Ince finishes it. What a cross from hudson Adoy. But the run made that goal. I just saw in the very top, there's an open ints, and he just finishes it with his right foot right underneath the keeper. I think it might have gone through his legs, actually. But hudson Adoy with the delivery, it's absolutely spot on. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, it's gone under the keeper, under his legs, in between his legs. And that's his second goal of the season so far. And we're once again leading. Hopefully we can hold on to that lead and not concede any goals. I want a clean sheet. Try and put ints in again here. It's a bit of a heavy pass, but he should get there. Please keep that in. Nicely done. Now whipping across. It's not great. And Dai wins it though. Oh, come on, Atebo. Right there. And Dai again. No! Oh, that pass was so close to going through. Referee should blow his whistle here. And there we go. Winning the game. I thought Sunderland were going to be a tough opposition. And so far, I mean, they haven't been bad, but we, we've, we've been playing pretty good football and the goal was brilliant. So hopefully we can continue this performance into the second half and try and get a couple more goals because... Goal difference, I just have a feeling it might be a thing at the end of the season that we rely on, at least at some point. There's going to be some teams right up there with us, unless we can continue winning games like we are at the moment. But we're bound to slip up at some point, and who knows, goal difference might be a big factor at, at one point. In the Championship, it's very possible because there's just more teams. I might try and hit this, actually. Go on. Oh! I don't think it was far off, actually. I'm really enjoying using Imbula, and actually it took a deflection, so... Who knows, maybe it was going in. Let's get the corner in. It's a good ball in. Kanate. Oh, good save by the keeper and I'm not going to get there. I was hoping I could get another cross in, but the defender beat me to it. Why do I get a bad feeling about Sunderland scoring in the next few minutes? I really hope not. I want to I wanna try and get a second if we can here. That is a slightly overhit pass. Is he going to keep it in though? And die, he's quick, you know. He has. I didn't expect him to keep that in. The cross comes in. Atebo misses. It's just wide. Oh, that was close to being the second goal. In fact, I'm going to make some changes now. Atebo's... I think I'm going to take him off. I'm going to bring on Joe Allen for a, a few minutes here. We're going to bring on Juve as well up top. And on that left side, Smith Rowe is going to come in for the final 10 minutes or so. And let's see if we can get that second goal. Just please don't concede. Go on, Smith Rowe. Make that run. Nice. Okay, we need a runner now. I think we might get Juve here. Get it in the box. Oh, deflection and Juve. That's the second time this has happened. He has scored two goals for me, both times with his, with his first touch. Quite literally the first touch of the ball. He is a super sub and that will wrap up this game. It's going to be another three points. Smithrow will get the assist, although very lucky. It took a massive deflection and it just fell for Juve. I don't think it would have gone to him otherwise. Two goals from two touches. I mean, doesn't get much better than that, does it, for a striker as he comes on off the bench. Maybe he's in with a shout to start because Ifobe hasn't done much in this game. I've, I've got to be honest. And that should be full time. So, nine points from nine in the championship. Can't really ask for a better start. I am a little bit disappointed that we did get knocked out of the Carabao Cup. But, of course, like I've already said, doesn't matter too much. I'm just happy that we're doing so well in the championship. We've made a really good start in the league. Hopefully... We just continue with that. Going into our next game, we have Norwich. Now, I know they're doing very well at the moment. They've got a lot of exciting young players. I know their right back was linked with Arsenal. Probably won't ever happen, seeing as we can't even afford 1p. But uh, I think this might be the team that will challenge us the most. Maybe. It's, of course, FIFA. Compared to real life, it, it might be nothing like uh, the Norwich team in real life right now. But we'll, we'll see. This could be a tougher game than we've had so far. Maybe our first proper, proper challenge. Because Sunderland, 
I wasn't actually that impressed, but we've made a couple of changes. Smith Rowe will start this game, as will Juve, and I am going to be bringing on Fosu in the second half behind the striker, and hopefully he'll get his first goal. But uh, here we go up against Norwich now. I think it was only fair to put Juve and Smith Rowe in the lineup after making such an impact off the bench when Hudson Odoi and Defoe didn't really do anything in the last game. So, well, actually, in fairness, Hudson Odoi did do that first half cross, which got us the goal, but other than that, pretty much nothing. And we're already in here. Go on. No way. It's, this is ridiculous. This cannot continue. It's not fair. I'm not going to be able to keep this up, but Juve again scores with his first touch in the game. He's just ridiculous. There was a player... Wasn't, wasn't there another player in real life that had a record like that? He pretty much scored with his first touch all the time. I can't remember who it was. But that, that's a brilliant finish as well. Across the keeper, in between the defender. Three goals in three touches. Wow. Juve, if you score another goal in this game, and it's your second touch of the game from a cross or whatever it may be, I will eat my hat. Oh, God. Oh, Butland, what a save. They got in, and it was quite easy, actually, for them. But now we get on the break, and it's going to be a touch for Juve. There you go. I'm not going to have to eat my hat now. All over the top. Oh, my God, we're in. We're in. Come on, Undai. Finish it. No, and again. Yes, it's two. Two nil after 12 minutes. Norwich go from one end almost scoring to conceding right away. And that is a huge, huge start for us in this game because it might be the toughest game of the season or one of the toughest games of the season being up against Norwich. Or they might be rubbish. You know, we are one season in. Maybe they've lost a couple of their good players. Who knows? But we're off to a brilliant start in this game. And Ndai, again, he's, in, he's just in brilliant form. Good ball. Brilliant pass into Smith Rowe here. No way are we going to make it 3-0. Ball comes in. Is it offside? It's not. It's 3-0. Are we watching Chelsea here? 3-0 down before the first half ends. I think it was even 4, wasn't it, in that game? Poor Chelsea fans going through a lot right now, as are Norwich fans, because they are getting demolished. There's, there's no other word to describe it. We are absolutely demolishing them here. I think it's actually going to be an own goal. Is it an own goal? It is. McLean has scored an own goal. I mean, I'll take it. Norwich cannot even hold the ball for more than a few seconds. We've just got so much pace, so much power. And look at this, we're in again. Oh my god, it's just too easy. Okay, maybe I spoke a little bit too soon there. Imbula was in. If I got the shot away, that could have well been 4-0 before half-time. And there is half-time. What a game so far. Can I just say, by the way, I really enjoyed playing with Crew, but this Stoke side, it just feels so good. I, I, I can't explain it. Every single player in this team, the signings I've made, it feels really good. I'm really enjoying playing with it. And the 4-2-3-1 seems to be working extremely well because we're not conceding goals and we're scoring a lot of goals, which is, well, that's what you need to do in football to win games, isn't it? Duh. Oh, God, that could be good. He's going to keep that in. Here's Hernandez. He's going to try and get a cross in. Oh, my God. No. Not like this. There's no way I'm conceding a goal like that. Come off it, game. That was ridiculous. Well, Norwich are definitely having a better half right now, but it's too late. It's 3-0. And they've just given me the ball back. Thank you very much. Now we make them pay. Go on, Ince. Just run. Just run, Ince. I don't think he's going to get there. Oh, he might. No, Lewis. He's done well. Oh, wow. Almost got it back. There's still 20 minutes to go, so it's very possible they could still mount a, a little bit of a comeback. But not again, they're just giving the ball away. They're not going to be able to do anything if they don't have the ball. Now here's Smith Rowe. We're going to do a first-time cross with his left foot. <laughs> and he's just fallen backwards, but we'll get the corner. We actually have lost a lot of our possession from the first half. It was about 60-40, I think. So they've definitely been playing better in this second half, Norwich. But they haven't scored yet. And here's Ince again. Over to Sirachi. First time cross for Juve. Oh, that was a vital touch from the defender. That really was. That was going straight to Juve. And you know he was banging that in the back of the net. Do you know what? Why not? Boom. No way. I mean, in my head, that's not what I saw coming. <laughs> that is definitely not what I saw coming, but... I mean, my luck is is crazy right now. Have a look at this. Did it take a deflection? Yeah, massive deflection. It was... 
I think it was on target, but I'm not sure it would have gone in if it didn't take this deflection off his head, or was it the other guy's elbow? I don't know, but that's 4-0. And it has gone down as another own goal. So it was going off target. We're going to make those changes now, though. Fosu's going to come on. I'm also going to bring on Woods. And I think Campbell. Let's give Campbell a go. We're going to take off Ince and swap him. Juve has actually been playing right back and right mid for Stoke, apparently. So he's pretty good out on that right side. But we're going to give Campbell a go up top. He's one of the young players that I'm really interested in developing this season. Oh, my God. Fosu, he's going. He's going for it. He's found Juve. Back in for Fosu. Finish it. No, that was it. His debut for the club and he's missed it. Well, technically not his debut for the club, but his debut for me. It's the first time I've used him in a game. And he's put it wide just a few moments before the end of the game as well. That would have been 5-0. We're not going to have time to get another goal, but we might have to defend one more attack to get this clean sheet. Nope, we don't have to. The referee's ended it there. Wow, what a game. Two own goals. Although, I think... It's unlucky that that fourth goal won't count for Sirachi because it, it was a good shot. It just it was maybe going off target by a couple of mil, but it doesn't matter, guys. 4-0. Absolutely unbelievable start to this campaign. And now we've got a chance to make a signing. We're going to take a look at the right mids. I don't think we're going to have their full scout reports, but I'm going to try and sign one now anyway because we do have a lot of games coming up and I need to rotate. First, though, let's catch up on some of the sales we're making. So Charlie Adam has gone. Bye-bye, mate. We've had an offer here for Sutar, a defender that I'm not going to use. He's 20 years old, doesn't look very good stats-wise, and his wages are pretty high for what we're getting from him. So I'm actually going to allow this offer to go through. He might be a young prospect at Stoke, I don't know, but his, his uh, potential in this game certainly isn't good enough. And I'm only here for a year, potentially two years, it depends what happens. So I just don't think I'm going to get any use out of him. We had another offer come in for the third choice goalkeeper, which has broken down. Again, his wages seem to be just a little bit too high. But as you can see here, we will have Hull City in our next game. But I already mentioned how we're going to be doing the transfer window now. We've got some stats that we can work with here. We don't know their weekly wage. But I know for a fact that Chong is going to have the highest wages because, of course, he's at Manchester United. Clark, I mean... He looks like he could be a good player, but the only the only thing I don't like about Clark is he is right-footed. And I like my right-sided players to be left-footed and my left-sided players to be right-footed. It's just a preference of mine. So it's kind of down to Butuba or Butoba and Chong. Looking at their stats, it's interesting, isn't it? Butoba looks actually more like a centre-attacking midfielder. He's got really high agility and balance, which is always good. Not very high strength. His stamina is pretty poor. Um, I don't know. He still could be very good for us. But Chong, we already know he's a very, very good young player. And he's at Manchester United for a reason. And he's got his official face, which is always a good thing. So I'm going to approach to loan. Okay, they're willing to talk. That's interesting. Sometimes the young players at the big clubs, you can't actually loan them. The club will just say we're not looking to loan them out, which is really frustrating because they're young players, right? So we're going to try a loan just because why not? They're only going to uh, only offer a one year or a half year. So we'll go for one year. And we should be able to get him on half 50-50 or maybe I can try 40. So his wages are 21k. It is quite high, isn't it, for a 19-year-old? So let's see if that works out for us. No, they want to do 60-40. Let's try 50-50 then. Money's not really a big deal. No, they want 60-40. Well, he is going to play. So we're going to do it. We're going to get ourselves Chong on loan. And I'm not going to worry about signing a player permanently just yet. But Clark and Butoba, I'll keep them on the shortlist. You never know. We might want to bring one of them in in January. Who knows? But Chong hopefully will accept that contract. And he will be, uh, be with us for the next few games. He won't be available for the whole game, which is a bit of a shame. Let's see where Hull are right now. They are... Oh my god. They're down in the relegation zone. They haven't won a single game. That's uh, t pretty terrifying. And, and just, just to clarify how much of a good start we've made. Four games, four wins. 11 goals scored. Zero conceded. We haven't conceded a single goal. Whilst I've been in control of the team. We obviously conceded in the Carabao Cup. But... Uh, Four games, 12 points, zero goals conceded. We have started brilliantly well, and I'm just hoping that it continues. But uh, we'll get it, get into the whole game in the next episode, 
and we'll give Chong his debut. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this series, make sure you drop a like. We'll finish off the transfer window in the next episode, and then we've got a load of games coming up, and hopefully soon enough we'll have the FA Cup starting as well, which I'm really excited to begin. So um, I will see you in the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and I'll see you then.